right place. My name is Levi, and I am the Rural Communications Coordinator with Progress Michigan, calling from a hopefully soon-to-be snowy day in Emmett County. And I am very pleased to be joined by Joanne Galloway, Executive Director of the Center for Change in Northern Michigan Advocacy, Gary Wellnitz, who is the Northern Michigan Field Rep for AFT Michigan, along with Bob Thompson, President of the Michigan Farmers Union. And before I kick it to them for their remarks, uh, how this will go is we'll hear from each speaker, and after that time has elapsed, we'll turn it over to Q&A. And if you do have a question, please use the hand raise feature uh, in your Zoom uh, screen, and we'll be sure to grant you mic access so that you can ask your question. And we also will ask you to please identify your name and uh, which outlet you are calling from and representing. And if you do have any technical difficulties uh, throughout the duration of this call, feel free to send a direct message to myself and we'll hopefully get that sorted out. So without further ado, uh, I would like to pass it over to Joanne Galloway. Good morning and thank you Levi and Progress Michigan for partnering with us to bring attention to this important issue today. I appreciate our partners, the Michigan Farmers Union and AFT Michigan for their support and for joining us in this effort. And thank you to everyone who's on the call today for taking your time and for those who might listen to this later. I am Joanne Galloway. I spent 30 years of my life on a farm west of Pickford in Michigan's Eastern Upper Peninsula, 30 miles north of the beautiful Mackinac Bridge. We need the Michigan legislature to act and approve the funding and full-time employees as requested by the Department of Labor and Economic Opportunity for our Michigan High-Speed Internet Office. It is almost a daily occurrence that I see Facebook friends asking for help to find better internet service. I see their frustration attempting to apply for much needed unemployment benefits, but getting frustrated navigating the online system I see them driving an hour and a half or two hours for regular medical appointments, while remote access telehealth appointments have become the norm for others. I see friends and neighbors struggling with often undiagnosed mental health issues, not knowing where to turn for help while others are meeting regularly with a counselor online. As a mother of three 20 somethings and a small farm business owner, the lack of connectivity in rural areas of Michigan has become a concern for me for over 10 years. I remember my brother in Kent County begging me to get on Facebook. I'd go to the website and the little circle would go round and round. I didn't even have the language then to call it a homepage. I didn't even really understand what the circle going round and round meant. I've been on a continual learning path. I'm now the executive director for the Center for Change Northern Michigan Advocacy. Our mission is to inspire, educate, and empower ourselves and our neighbors. I want to thank Mackinac County's Moran Township Internet Committee of One and our Center for Change Connectivity Liaison, Jenny Hoffman, for her work on broadband development across the state, having brought this important issue to light through her diligent research. The work done by Connect Michigan and the Department of Labor and Economic Opportunity has set the stage for this next step. Today's event is a way for us to let our community know what is happening in broadband development in Michigan. We hope to inspire and empower others to be a part of the process and let their elected officials know what they need in their community. Our team has supported equitable access to high-speed internet for Northern Michigan since our inception in 2019. We are a 501c4 nonprofit. We are not a political party. We are nonpartisan. We have team members in Sault Ste. Marie, Rudyard, Kinross, Moran Township, Detour Village, Sheboygan, Alanson, Petoskey, Harbor Springs, and a widening region of Northern Michigan. We have members who rave about their internet and others who struggle. Just this morning, after I shared yesterday's legislative committee recording on this very subject, I got the response from a retired school administrator. I'm looking at it now but my computer network is so slow that it might take me most of the day to watch the whole thing. 
I also want to give a shout out to the Eastern Upper Peninsula Technology Director and REMC Director Jason Cronemeyer, along with the EUP ISD Superintendent Angie MacArthur for their vision and for the opportunity for C4C to support the development of the new EUP Connect Collaborative. Having invited all of the schools, the villages, cities, townships, and three counties in the Eastern Upper Peninsula to join in collaboration with the Sioux Tribe of Chippewa Indians, the Bay Mills Tribe, Regions Three Hospitals, Library System, Regional Planning and Economic Development, to work together developing public-private partnerships with the goal of access to affordable, reliable, secure broadband to every 911 address in the three county region. Over the years, it seems every idea that we've explored has gotten hung up over money. However, with the current federal investment in broadband, it is currently raining money for broadband development. Now is the time to play our cards right. Every Michigander deserves access to affordable, reliable, and secure internet. Dedicated full-time staff in our Michigan High-Speed Internet Office is an important part of making sure that communities get on a level playing field. The stars are aligned. Over the years, I understand it's been difficult for private internet service providers to make a business case in rural areas. That's why it's imperative that townships, counties, cities, and villages look at how they can partner with internet service providers and builders in their area to leverage investment now. These public-private partnerships are key. As the executive director for C4C, I can tell you that our entire team is ready to support those who have the power to make this happen. The Michigan High Speed Internet Office was created last May. That's great. However, without any funding and without the eight full-time employees, it's just a shell of an entity. I know that officials on both sides of the aisle do understand how important it is to get affordable, reliable, high-speed internet to all of our neighbors. Join with me and we'll work with them while the stars are aligned and we'll get this done. Thank you, Levi. Thank you, Joanne. Pleasure working with you on this really important initiative. And I would next like to pass it over to Bob Thompson of Michigan Farmers Union. Oh, Bob, let me unmute you. One second. Is that there better, we... Levi? Yep, we can hear you. All right. Sorry about that. Hello. As Levi said, my name is Bob Thompson, and I currently live on and operate our family's Centennial Farm in uh, Central Michigan. Just as it is a privilege for me to be a steward of our family's land, it is also my privilege to serve as the president of the Michigan Farmers Union. Many ask, what is the Farmers Union? It is a nonpartisan, grassroots, member-driven farm organization born in 1934 and dedicated to advancing the social and economic well-being of our family farmers throughout Michigan. I come to you today with our partners to ask for your support in our request that the state legislature fully fund and provide the eight full-time staff the long ago created Michigan High-Speed Internet Office requires. In today's world, it is without question that affordable, accessible, stable, high-speed internet in all corners of Michigan is critical. Family farmers need to closely monitor commodity markets, have access to educational programming, make the most out of opportunities presented by federal and state loans and grants, and even in the purchasing and delivery of necessary farm inputs, parts, and other supplies. While most families, including our rural family farmers, are no strangers to pinching pennies, they also know the value of spending wisely and investing in the future. Given the amount of federal dollars that are available for broadband investment, our state legislature <laughs> needs to quit pinching pennies, look to the future, and fully fund the Michigan High-Speed Internet Office, including the eight full-time employees. Again, it is my privilege to be here today alongside my partners, representing the independent family farmers of the Michigan Farmers Union on this critically important issue. Uh, thank you, Levi. Thank you, Bob. Always a pleasure working with you. 
And we are going to hear next from Gary Wellnitz of AFT Michigan. Hi, I am Gary Wellnitz. I work for American Federation of Teachers now. I represent uh, school districts from Clare over to Tawas, north to Whitefish Point in the Upper Peninsula. And I've been a longtime educator of 35 years in the Eastern UP, Mackinac County, the town of Cedarville, Hessel, and a longtime board, town board member there. And, and through the years, and I, I want to throw a shout out uh, also to the EUP ISD. Um, I want to back up Joanne praise for those folks uh, for being cutting edge. You, Years ago, they saw the value in high-speed internet. We ran a trunk line down M129 so that our small communities could at least have a library with a decent internet service, but we simply did not have the funds to uh, branch out any further than that to get into individual homes and such. So the need is dire. And uh, every, every school district that I represent across Northern Michigan sings the same tune we simply do not have the ability to reach out to these kids in their in their homes properly with uh, good internet and and uh, going virtual through this pandemic really opened our eyes to that and uh, um, we need we need that ability even when we're not going virtual those kids need the ability to do homework to be able to do research um, in in their homes um, and we are just putting them behind uh, the competitive veg with their peers nationally and globally. Uh, same with teachers that need to stay at the top of their game. Uh, we just are putting them at a huge disadvantage. And looking at this from the, uh, the town board aspect, uh, the imp impact on the economy in our small rural areas and statewide is being impacted greatly by this inability to um, access good high-speed internet. Uh, we have many people that wish to uh, relocate to the Eastern UP because of its uh, beauty and lifestyle, but yet they need to be able to work from home and or in their business that they want to start there. And this has just been a huge impediment to, to that economic development. <clears throat> so um, this, uh, I, I think, Progress Michigan and Joanne for, with the Center for Ch Change in Michigan for allowing me a few minutes to uh, help with this initiative and Bob Thompson with the Farmers Union for coming on board because it, it impacts all of us. And, uh, you know, from farmers to parents to teachers um, to the small businesses, uh, we need to have this office fully funded with the proper staffing uh, to be able to identify these areas that we lack and to uh, come up with a plan to address that. And as Joanne said, the money is there. Um, Governor Whitner, Whitmer has had the foresight to, to make this office because she knows the importance of it. Now we need to follow through and make it uh, um, an actual functioning office. So thank you for uh, letting me have a few minutes of your time. Thank you, Gary. And with that, we are going to turn it over to question and answer. Just to remind all of you, uh, if you do have a question, please use the hand raise feature and I can uh, get you off mute so you can answer it. And if you can please identify yourself with your name uh, and your outlet. That the recording has stopped. Great. And um, yeah, without further ado, uh, we will go ahead and start. Hi, Levi. This is Kevin Essebaggers from 9 and 10 News. Um, I've got two questions. The first is just a procedural one for you. Uh, where can I access this recording afterwards to be able to? Uh, I will send you my email um, right after this, and I'll send it over to you. Okay, cool. Um, and I, I don't know uh, who would be best to answer this question, so I'll let you figure <laughs> figure that out. But uh, the governor releasing her budget proposal this afternoon, or I'm sorry, tomorrow afternoon. Um, any reason to believe uh, that there will be funding for this office in her budget proposal? So to my knowledge, um, this has already been something that she has submitted. 
So it's really up to the legislator at this point to go forward and commit to the full funding and the, and the full time staff for this office. I can speak to that. Um, we're really hoping that something happens uh, in appropriations with, a, I'm going to not think of the right word, but like an addendum to last year's budget as opposed to the upcoming budget year, because the timing is so critical. We need to think of the fact that we're not in this alone. All 50 states are receiving lots of federal funding for broadband development. Our neighboring states around us already have staff in place in offices. So there's going to be the challenge of, um, as we go forward and continue to make more, take more time of uh, putting the staff that we're looking for to staff the office, as well as thinking about just the construction itself as we start to put together a statewide plan and gather the data and identify the need and figure out where the projects need to happen. We're going to be competing with uh, others all across this country for access to all of the supplies to do the construction and all of the labor force. So. Um, I think it's really important that we move forward quickly and it needs to happen um, in, in appropriations soon. And just a quick follow up on that. Would would a public push from the governor tomorrow on, on you know, this is her budget proposal being released is going to get a lot of media attention. Would uh, spending some time on this issue tomorrow, uh, how much would that help your cause? That's really not a question that I'm prepared to answer, but thank you for your question, Governor. All right, and I see a question right now from Andrew. Let me take you off. Oh, can you hear me now? Mm -hmm. Okay, Andrew Minner, I'm with uh, Mirrors News, uh, and I was looking through the I was looking through the, the budget right now uh, under the Department of Labor and Economic Opportunity. I'm not seeing a line item really with the um, with the Internet Office for the new budget. And I know you uh, you had said uh, you were hoping it would come up in appropriations. Um, is it? Is there something that, that you guys have planned if if they don't bring it up in appropriations? Like, what, uh, um, what is your what is your next move? I guess would be the question. I would say right now we're still laser focused on pressuring these committees to get the ball rolling. Um, I don't know if any other other panelists. Um, would like to pipe in. Yeah, so I think that uh, there's a lot of opportunity right now for uh, education. Yesterday, the House Appropriations uh, General Government Subcommittee met, and there was a presentation uh, from Connect, uh, Connect Michigan with Eric Frederick there, and also with uh, Todd with uh, Labor and Economic Development, their legislative liaison, provided a lot of information about what is needed. Um, I had an opportunity to speak with Northern Michigan Representative uh, Sue Aller following that meeting. And um, it was a really good opportunity for her to learn more about what the plans are. Um, and uh, she, I thought, asked a really good question in the meeting and that is she remembers uh, previously a situation where their region um, anticipated that like a lot of internet development was going to happen. But what came out of that project was a connecting of some key infrastructure, like maybe fire halls and libraries, and no individual residences were connected, um, which understanding the history of broadband development, we understand that that was the case, but a lot of um, a lot of people in our communities don't understand that. And so they got excited, they were getting something and then they were disappointed they didn't. And she wanted to make sure that that was not going to happen again, which is one great piece that's in the new legislation is it's laser focused on last mile um, build outs in those last mile uh, construction pieces. Thanks, and now I see a question from uh, Isaac. Just give me a second here. Hi, yeah, can you all hear me? Mm -hmm. Um, Isaac Constance with the Gander. 
Um, I'm curious how uh, having this office fully staffed will help uh, roll out the money from the infrastructure law that was passed. Um, I know Michigan's receiving some hundred million there for uh, broadband and you know high speed development. Um, what's the benefit of having an office in actually rolling that out? Not to hug the mic, but I'm happy to speak to that unless someone else wanted to jump in. Yes, so one of the really important key points of the federal infrastructure bill is that there's actually two components in there for broadband monies. One program is an acronym BEAD, B-E-A-D, and we can get more information out on that later. Um, but both of those programs uh, require a very detailed plan to be submitted by the state. They require the state to have a single point of contact for those broadband monies to come to. It's also important to remember that this is different. This is new. Typically, infrastructure uh, monies from the federal government for internet or broadband come directly to an internet service provider or a builder. So it's new that those monies are coming through the states. So this is, it requires something different than what's been required in the past. And if I didn't answer your full question, feel free to ask it again. No, that helps a lot. Thank you. Thanks, Isaac. Do we have any further questions? Well, it looks like um, it's time to wrap up, but if you do have any further uh, follow-up, feel free to email me. It's levi at progressmichigan.org. I already put it in the chat, um, but feel free to follow up if you have um, any needs at all. Um, but again, really appreciate all of you for taking your time for coming. Um, just to all of our panelists who are still on, if you can just stay on so that we can uh, do some debrief. Um, but again, thank you all for attending. Um, hope you have a great rest of your day.